Welcome to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update, hosted by the York Group of Downing Fry Realty. Our show will bring you the most up-to-date information on the local real estate market, presented by leading experts in the field. Good afternoon and welcome to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update. I'm Michael York with the York Group of Downing Fry, and today I'm joined by John Cochran, owner of the John Cochran Golf Schools. Uh, John, thank you for coming on, this, on the show today. Thanks for having me, Mike. Absolutely. And um, John, for our viewers, um, we're going to start doing something a little bit different here. And um, obviously you have several golf um, locations throughout Canada and, and the United States. And we're going to start doing a little series here to help some of our viewers out. Um, and starting with the most basic of levels and then working into something um, a little bit more in intricate um, for the golf swing. and, and um, I thought you'd be a good guest for us to have on today. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get down here? How'd you get started in golf? Well, I was my, I started at age three. My dad was a was a great player. He you know he was a, a really good athlete, professional boxer. Got drafted by Manchester United way back when, and got into golf. But didn't start golf until he was about 48 years old. And the interesting thing is that you know people think it takes a long time, but um, he's you know he shot more times in the 60s than I have. And uh, he's no longer with us, but um, uh, during that period of time, you know, we, as a, as a junior, I played a lot of golf. And uh, he was a nickel part of, of, of my development because he was a real studier of the game, a real student of the game, and took, took lessons on a constant basis and to develop a skill. So, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, from, from a childhood up, um, it, was, uh, it was very good. Absolutely. Well, um, obviously, you know, with the John Cochran Golf Schools that you have in, in Canada and, and throughout the United States, um, you know, you um, have a large audience, but where specifically are your schools located? So I've one at Glen Abbey in Toronto um, and at Old Cypress Golf Course in Naples, Florida. A great golf course. Uh, yeah, I have a, a phenomenal uh, uh, teaching facility at the back. And the you know the ability to go on the golf course, which is uh, you know I consider quite a strong golf course. Mm -hmm. And then uh, up in um, um, Tampa at uh, River, Hills, River Hills Golf Country Club and Bloomingdale's Golf Course Country Club uh, in Tampa, up in Val Rico, Florida. And Glen Abbey's hosted a tournament or two, haven't they? Yeah, I mean Glen Abbey's a great golf course. I mean a lot of <laughs> champions there. It's uh, it's hosted the Canadian Open for many many years. And um, uh, yeah, no, it's 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 another great facility. Absolutely. And so let's get into, you know, you have these golf schools, but who mm -hmm. do you cater to? Are you more of a, you know, do you only work with professional golfers? Are you working with new students? Are you working with, a, you know, a younger clientele, older clientele, or kind of everybody? Uh, everybody. I mean, right from, right from beginning golfers, juniors, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think it, you know, I've, my youngest student was four years of age, and mm -hmm. uh, we, had, we had a ball together. So the kids, the kids from a development standpoint, you know, starting early is very important. But uh, anywhere from, um, you know, from, from developing golfers, which at all age brackets, from no matter when they start, from 16 to, I've got people who start at age 55, age 60, as they, as they get uh, into the retirement part and want to learn the game of golf and want to, you know, want to have a, have a successful time playing the game of golf. Yeah, so incredible. I think my oldest, my oldest student's been, it was 80 years of age, and um, he came to the school and did, did fantastic. And, you know, I think it's it's important that to realize that it, golf is a game that no matter when you start, you can you can develop your skills to whatever level you want, depending on how hard you want to work at it. And we have fun doing it at the same time. Absolutely. And before we are going to do a little live interaction yeah. um, segment here, but before we get into that, um, explain to us, uh, and I'm a big believer in this as well, the steps of, of learning before we actually get into the, the sort of live segment of moving around and, and touching a club. Um, you know, before somebody comes to you and what you're looking for and your expectations, um, define the steps of learning um, to our audience. So, uh, you know, when somebody comes, whether they're a brand new golfer, let's say a brand new golfer comes in and, and I'll ask them, I'll say, you know, what, what would you like to do? And most, most cases they're going to say, you know, I, I just want to learn the game of golf and have some fun. But human nature is, is that when you start to get the ball off the ground and all of a sudden you make your first par, mm -hmm. you want to make two pars, right? So yeah. I have kind of a philosophy that there's really kind of four steps. One is intellectual understanding, which means you have to understand it, right? So as I'm explaining it to the student, he has to be able to understand that. Two is physical application. So what does that mean? Physical application means that when you explain it, right, uh, then you have to show what does that mean to a body movement? So if you're doing posture, which we're gonna talk about in the next segment, you know, how do I get the right posture, right? right. Great, the word posture is, it can be defined as all different kinds of 
positions, but there's a specific way to do it when you're developing your skills, which takes, allows you to take a lot of time off your development time. It doesn't take five years. It's, it, you can do it in a short period of time. Third is mirror training, right? So as you understand it and as you now physically understand it, you have to do it in front of the mirror. Yeah. You have to have visual feedback. That's, that's, that's the crucial part because uh, all golfers out there, you know, what we think we do uh, and we what actually, we do are, yeah. are two different things. <laughs> and I, everybody who's, who's going to uh, listen to the segment are going to say that that's 100% true. You know, I yeah. thought I was doing it, but I wasn't doing it. And the last thing is the student has to be able to articulate it back, which means, you know, for them to become the student in the game and for me to kind of weed them off, you know, having so many lessons, is the goal is for them to be able to articulate it back, show me what they're doing, show me in front of the mirror, and as they develop their skills better, uh, it allows them to, to move forward faster in the game because they're going to develop what they call proprioception, which would mean they're going to be aware of what they're doing. Everybody develops that body awareness. Right. And I think the big thing is that, is that you know, as you get into, um, when I was at, up at Family Golf in Toronto, we used to do 150, um, uh, we would do 30, 30, 150 uh, seniors a week, right? 30, 30 in a class for nine week period. And no matter, uh, you know, seniors can be from age 50 to, to 70, depending on what you want to define senior as. But their skill level could develop just like everybody else's. That's the key. But they have to understand what they need to do. And if they have some mobility or issues, then we're, we work on those things to make sure that they can progress to the, their level as fast as they can. But right. it's good. Well, you talk about the nine-week program. What is a typical, um, you know, how many lessons should somebody take? How should they space them out? It's, it's easy to just, you know, get an instructor um, like somebody such as yourself and say, well, you know, I'll go every week for, you know, for a year or I'll go once a month or, you know, for a year. How, what is the proper, um, you know, spacing well, you know, I think, allotment? I think it's, you need to do a series of five lessons. You know, a series of five lessons gets you to, you know, one lesson, you know, and again, I'm not a person that does any band-aid golf, which means, you know, you come in and I'm just going to twist your grip a little bit, but there's other fundamentals that are wrong. Wow. Because, you know, as you know, put a band-aid on your finger, it's going to fall off in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's more of a development phase. So you say, well, when they come in, you're doing a, f a series of five lessons. We're going to look at, you know, what, what is the most important thing first. Maybe it's their posture first. Maybe it's uh, their posture is fantastic and we're going to work on the backswing. But during that time, they, the first thing I ask them is, where do you want to be? So if an if individual comes in and says, you know, I want to shoot, uh, I'm an 85 shooter, uh, and I want to shoot in the 80s, yeah. well, here's, here's, here's the game plan, right, right, to do that. And during that five, five step of, uh, you know, normally it's once a week, what I find is this, every, it's between five and seven days. Uh, anything less than five days is not a de enough development time and anything more than seven days, the student forgets. Yeah. So I try to keep it with those five to seven uh, day period, just because of the fact that then the student has their development time, they come back, they're still, they still have awareness of it, and if any refinements are required, then we do those refinements, and we want to move on to that next stage and keep things progressing so they can hit their objectives, right? Absolutely. Well, John, thank you. When we come back, guys, John is, uh, is going to get up and show us a little bit about the golf swing, the posture, stance, grip, alignment, um, etc. So stay tuned. Thinking of buying a home located in a golf course community in the Naples, Marco, Bonita, or Estero, Florida? Here is what Mark Lai, former PGA winner, says about Realtor Michael York of the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty. Hi, I'm Mark Lai. If you have any real estate needs in Naples, Florida, the one company to contact is the York Real Estate Group. Also, if you want a golf course property to invest in, Michael York of the York Real Estate Group is the guy to contact. Michael knows every golf course in Naples. I will tell you this, he's been in the golf business for a long time. He's played all the great golf courses down here and he is an outstanding realtor. I've known him for quite some time and he's an honest, he's got a lot of integrity and he very much knows his stuff on all the different clubs here in Naples. So the York Real Estate Group is a great place to start. So if you have any time or anybody that wants to visit down here in Naples and, and uh, look at the options out there, please contact the York Real Estate Group. Welcome back to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update. Uh, as we mentioned before, we're going to get into our live segment with, with John. And um, John, after my storied amateur career, um, as you know, playing a lot of golf with with you, um, you know, the most important segment that we're going to get into, this is segment one, the most important probably segment that we'll have. But um, 
let's go into a little bit of, about um, you know th the fundamentals of golf, and even before the round really starts is is really when um, you know when the major things happen that can um, lead you to having a successful round of golf. Right. So let's go into some of the basics about the warm up. Yeah, so the warm up is a, is, is is a crucial element for all golfers, especially people uh, you know from the development phase, but but also once you get into your senior years. Reason being is is that um, you've got to you know as we were with kids, we're always moving, right? Right. But adults get they don't move as much, so get stiff. Yep. they get stiff. Their hip their hip flexors don't move the same way, and that's a big effect on golf, right? right. So if you want to be able to hit the ball a long way, you have to be able to get your hips to move properly. So this movement here, which I'm going to demonstrate here, is just basically, and if, and if you can't balance on one foot, if you can't balance on one foot, then just have put a club to your side. And what we're doing here is we're just going to swing the leg back and forward. And the importance of swinging the leg back and forward is you want to keep your body still and just move your leg. And that works on the hip joint itself, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And you do that five or six times, and you do the left side, left, and then you allow your leg to lift, five or six times. So what you're doing is you're actually opening up your hips capsule. And that's, again, for all ages. Yep. I don't care if you're 80 or 70 or 60 or 14 years of age, right? It's very important. And make sure that you do both sides, right? Absolutely. Once you've done that, now what we have to do is start to get into some what we call side bends. And the mm -hmm. side bends, you put your arms straight up in the air, you try to hold your stomach in, and you allow your side to bend. And what you're doing is you want to think that you have a pillow between both ears. And you want to feel like you're crunching on the left-hand side, and take it back up and crunching on the right hand side, right? And again, five per side. So you've done your legs, you've done your side bends, now these are called back bends, right? Mm -hmm. And again, you have to be careful in case you have a little bit of Absolutely. back problems. So you're gonna go all the way down, and then you're gonna go all the way up. And the goal here is, is to allow your hips to go out a little bit and your back to bend. Yeah. So again, what we're trying to do is get some mobility. This in the back here is called your thoracic spine. We're trying to get some mobility in there. Again, all ages, very important. Just trying to open up the body, loosen Just it so it's more consistent. Just trying to open up, you know, warming, they say warm up the mind, warm up the body, warm up the mind, right? Absolutely. Then once you've done those, you can do some rotation. You just hold the club out, right? And you mm -hmm. turn to your right and you turn to your left, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, back and forth. And you're just getting your body to move. So warming up this way, now your nervous system is turned on, right? And then when you pick up a golf club, you're conditioned. So if you've been sitting all day and you don't do this, you, and you're expecting your body to perform, it's not going to. So you have to kind of condition it. So just do those three little things to start off with. There's more, but that would be good enough to, for, the, for the viewers at this That's point. That's very in time. true. I see the guys just grab the clubs out the bag, yeah, set them down, you know, and then does these, boom. you know, they've yeah. seen her on, on the tour. Miguel does on this, hell. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Does exactly. You knee. do that well. You've practiced. Huh? <laughs> I've been working on it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, now that we have our, our back, our hips, and, and body kind of loosened up, engaged, opened up, if you will, um, for somebody that's playing golf on a regular basis and even coming to you, um, and I, I see it all the time, and, and this week, you know, the guys are at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and Mr. Palmer was, was huge on the fundamentals, but specifically right. the grip. Right. But that's the first thing, you know, the first series of things that are often forgotten. Everybody wants to come to you and say, hey, teach me the magic, you know, give me the magic pill that I can swallow today to, you know, I don't want to warm up, I don't want to loosen up, and, and I just want to take a pill and swallow it and, and shoot 75. But what are the most important things starting out every day to make sure that uh, you know that are correct to help you have a successful either warm-up session, yeah. practice, or round? Well, whether, whether you're again a developing golfer or a more experienced golfer like yourself, maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have a maintenance program, and maintenance program is education. You're educated on what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to bow in your posture, which we're going to go through here in a second. And, and, and the more you're educated on that, it's part of maintenance. So every, every time you go out to practice, you have to check that. Because if you don't, you wake up every day, your body's different. The next thing you know, you're, what I see on the range is the major, major components on the range are two things. is terrible posture, right, which stops your rotation, which makes you come out of posture, top the ball, do all kinds of really nasty stuff. And, and the second thing is your lower body's not moving. That the number of people I've seen down here that don't use their lower body and get balance, and that is really those two things from a fundamental standpoint, your grip stance, posture, alignment, and then getting your body to rotate to finish. If you work on the finish position from a proper posture position, you can fix a lot of things in the backswing. Mm -hmm. If you think of the golf swing as symmetrical circle and you work on the front half, then the back half has to comply. But nobody finishes a golf swing. 
They're yep. all hitting the ground and trying to hit the golf ball. Yep. So that that's trying to big, help it in the air. Help it in the air. That's the yep. biggest thing I see. So what we're going to do with you, because yep. even though you're 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 a good golfer, is we're going to go through it. I want the viewers to. And I still get out of alignment. Everyone yeah, do it, we don't all do. I? Yep. So, so yep. sort of the pros. Sort of the pros. So this is the fun part, and then, you know, learning is fun. Yep. So when you come for your lesson and you're going through it and going through the development phase, number one, I'm going to explain it to you. Number two, I'm going to show you. Number three is we're going to have mirrors there so you can see what it looks like. So when you go home. The goal is that you, know you can train that. on your own. I yeah. want you training on your own and coming back better than what you were after after that lesson. Absolutely, right. So yep. we're going to start off. Let's with get the into grip the grip first. All right. Absolutely. So with with the grip, and I want the viewers to, to follow along because the, when I do my segments, they have to be able to follow along. So it goes underneath this pad of the hand and across your finger line, just like you're shaking my hand on a yep. diagonal. So it was a half an inch down from the end. And you want to make sure that the club face, if you look at a club face, the club face has to be a 90 degree angle to where you want the ball to go. Okay. The key thing here is you have to be able to see two knuckles in your left hand, one, two. And there's no gap between your thumb and your forefinger, as if you put a T in between, right? So the last three fingers are your pressure points, but you have to see these two knuckles. So then when you draw that line up, it goes all the way up to the right hand side of your face. That's your right hand grip, left hand grip. So now this one here, the baby finger is going to overlap. Yep. This little groove in your hand right here is going to come up and fit right into your thumb. So when you look down, what you're going to see is two knuckles left hand, V points to the right side of your face, and this V in your, in, your, in your right hand now matches a V in your left, and that's called a neutral grip. If, when we have our lessons, we may, we may change that a little bit depending on a person's ability to rotate their forearms, but that right there is what we consider perfect grip. Last three fingers, your left hand, these two fingers of your right hand are your pressure points, but that's your grip. Absolutely. Okay, it's really that simple, right? Left arm is straight, right arm is relaxed, and the elbows always point to your hips. Your elbows always point to your hips. You're not like this, pointing outward. They point inward. So the elbows always point to your hips. That's very important. Good. Perfect. Okay, so the next part is posture. So I want you to grip your golf club with your back hands pointing out. And this is the biggest thing I see on because without proper posture, you can't rotate. Plain yep. and simple. So you're going to put your feet together for me. And I want everybody to think there's a big clock on the wall right here. It's 12 o'clock. From your shoulders to your hips, there's a straight line. And I want you to think of your hips. So you're going to leave your hips there, but you're going to bow forward to me to 2 o'clock. So you're going to go 1, 2. Perfect. Now let your arms hang straight down. Because your arms connect your shoulders, they'll hang directly underneath your shoulders. That's perfect. Now you're going to widen your stance. And you want to widen your stance a shoulder width apart. That's it. Good. And give me a little tiny flex your knees. Done. And this is, this is a major point. So when you look at your posture here, you've got three points, of, three points of posture. You have shoulder to hip, you have hip to knee, and you have knee to ankle. Those three points of posture will be maintained throughout the golf swing. Very important. Now, to people say, well, how do I know if I flex my knees enough? And here's the answer. If you draw a line down from your knees, your knees are flexed perfectly because your knees are now pointing to the balls of your feet. And from the center of your hip to the center of your feet, you're in balance. So you are now in perfect posture right there. And it's really that simple. So if you're doing it, you'd be having a mirror on the right-hand side, looking in the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. And as you're looking in the mirror, Right? You're going to be able to watch it. So you'd be actually turned sideways watching yourself do it to be able to, and again, look how quickly we got into that. Absolutely. So now from there, you're going to take the grip. Again, underneath the pad of the hand. Good. Left arm is straight. Right arm is underneath. And we want to be able to put our, we want the left arm straight. We want to be able to have a little gap there so we can put our hand in. And you're in perfect posture. Ball position, right, is going to be played two inches off the inside of your left heel. Basically from your, from your seven iron, right, down right. to your wedge. Middle of your stance, sorry, um, uh, your 8-iron, 9-iron pitch wedge and sandwich will be in the middle. Your 7-iron all the way down will be 2 inches off the inside of your left heel. And your driver, 3-wood and 5-wood, will be exactly the same. And what I want to show people is this, is that if I take this club, my driver, and I want you to put the driver in there as well. Don't bump your hands there. And just go mm -hmm. ahead and grip the driver. Yep. Right. Good. What you're going to notice is the posture is exactly the same. There's no difference in your posture. The only difference is you're going to stand further away with the golf ball because of the length of the shaft. And from the end of the golf club to your body is one hand width. Yep. But the posture is exactly the same. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And that's really how quickly, in, in every one of my lessons, that's how quickly people can get into their, their posture. It does not take very long. And once they understand that, that procedure and they do it at home, it takes no time at all for them to, to, to have it ingrained. And that's easy for them to practice at home or on the simple. ranges or yeah, simple Yeah, really things. simple, right? And especially if you've got mirrors on the range. Right. Okay. So the second thing now is it, what I see is lower body rotation. Nobody uses their lower body, right? Yep. So what I want you to do is face, face me straight on. Good. Right. And go in your posture there again. Good. Now crisscross your arms like this, right? Mm -hmm. So 
your lower body consists of your feet, knees, and hips. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to take this club, and I want to put a club, club right across your hips. Okay? Lock your thumbs right into your side. Good. And then what I want you to do is just turn towards your target. So your left hip, knees together. So here's the key, is your shoulder, hip, and knee are in one straight line. Left leg is straight, right knee is in. Now people will say, well, you know, you're a young guy, you're flexible, right? Right. So there, people are stiff. So right. this is how we do it. So we get the lower body working first, and I'm going to show you a really simple drill for people to do at home, right? Put your hands up like this. So what people do is they put their hands up on the wall, right? Put their thumbs together, bow on your posture again. And now what I want you to do is this little window right here, that's yep. a box. I want you to rotate your hips all the way through. Right, yep. up, right up on your toe. Come right up on your toe. Keep going. Right there you go. So yep. now for some, it'll, it'll find like it's, it, that'll be difficult. You may not be able to go as far as that. You may be able to go just a little bit. But right. what we're trying to do is get the increase it, increase, increase the it. separation between upper body and lower body, right all the way through. And what you notice is then here we come into our side bends. Mm -hmm. So the warm up that we did, what's what's the significance? Well, number one, you have a side bend. So now I've got my legs moving, and when I finish knees together, I'm in a little side tilt. Well, yeah. that's the same tilt I have as in my posture. Exactly. So yep. if you finish in that tilt, then all of a sudden now you won't top the golf ball. People top the golf ball because they they're can't out get of posture, the they can't get to it. Yep. So just trying to get their body to rotate by putting the club against their hips and practicing in the mirror, just turning towards the target as much as you can. And don't be afraid to get the knee in, right? Absolutely. So people who are 65, 70 years old, and they come up and they're hitting golf balls and they're flat footed and they look like this, by the end of the lesson, their knees are almost together. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So unless they have some hip problems where they can't do that, Pretty much everybody can get into that position. It might take a week, right? But as long as they just kind of slowly work it in, yep. all of a sudden you become more consistent. You also gain distance. Oh, with, big get a lot those. of distance, Absolutely. a lot of distance. Because without rotation, you can't get speed. So today, uh, just to recap, mm -hmm. sort of everything, the fundamentals of golf are definitely the most important: the grip, stance, posture, <clears throat> alignment, if, right. if you will, those sort of four or five things. And then, you know, just with the stretching that we talked about, the warm up, if you will, and even some of the movements and, and getting into the left side, those are things that may not necessarily happen overnight, but over the course of a couple weeks, if you if you continuously practice, do 100%. them, that you can get to that left side and become more consistent and repetitive. For sure. Yeah. So as, if you're up there every day and you spent 10 minutes and you know put your hands on the wall for 10 minutes and you just practice turning and trying to get your right knee in, uh, all of a sudden now it releases. This hasn't done it. I mean, it's been stagnant for a long time. So that's the fun part of learning is, is that there's, there's ways to make people better, right, by understanding and being educated on exactly what they need to do uh, to, to make themselves better. People don't think they can get better, and the only reason is they don't. When I ask them a question, they don't have the answer. So okay. they, 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 they hear all these different tips and stuff, but it's just tips. So okay. let's make the change. Let's make the change no matter what age you are and develop your skills and have a lot more fun playing golf, right, in second Ab one. Absolutely. John Cochran Golf Schools. Johnny, thank you Thanks. for coming on, buddy. Appreciate I look forward to doing the series with you. And stay tuned. If you'd like more information, please visit John's information on the screen now. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Thanks.